Hello folks, Professor Fiore back once again. In this video, we are going to dive into the Tina TI simulator, and we're going to look at something called parameter stepping. The basic idea is to have Tina run through a series of variations of component parameters automatically for you. It's going to save you some time. So let's start with something fairly straightforward. I just have a little lead network here, one capacitor, one resistor. Now we could calculate what the critical frequency for this is, in other words, the three decibel down point, uh, one over two pi RC. And if you use a one mic and a one K, you're gonna get 159 Hertz, right? So basically it's gonna pass everything above 159 and then it's gonna roll off below 159, six decibels per octave or 20 dB per decade, right? So, you know, this is like a coupling cap right, an amplifier, so it limits the low frequencies. Ultimately, it uh, completely blocks DC, all right? So I know that co my components have, you know, tolerance, there's variation. I might want to just look in here and see what some effects are as I change components, sort of a, like how, a what if, right, that kind of thing. Um, now you could do this manually, right? You could run a simulation on this and see what your uh, frequency response is. I'll just do that real quick, right? AC analysis, AC transfer characteristic. We'll go from, yeah, that looks good, 10 hertz to one meg. Okay, off we go, all right? So, you know, this is like, hopefully nothing new. This is a standard Bode plot kind of thing. So here's our you know, zero dB, gain of one basically, and then we're starting to roll off. Um, 1 dB per, there's 3 dB down right there, so there's 100 hertz, this line is 200 hertz, so that looks pretty good, all right? And we could even look at the phase, that's going to be 45 degrees at the critical frequency, right? We're, ultimately, we would go from plus 90 to zero, so here we are at 45, there's that assumed break frequency, right? 159. So now I might go in and just start, you know, monkeying with some of these uh, component values, but I can instead have Tina do it for me automatically. So one nice thing you can do here is look at, um, for example, component spread in terms of tolerance, a min-max kind of case. I just want to check out, you know, one component in this example and just see what happens. All right. To get into parameter stepping, stepping there's a couple things you can do. The first thing is you can come up to the um, analysis where it says mode, select that, and this little thing will come up up. And it normally says single, but you can select parameter stepping. All right. As it turns out, there's a little shortcut, which I'll show you right now. And that is to just come up here and hit this little button that says select control object. So you select this and you'll notice your arrow turns into this kind of oddly shaped thing with a little cursor and uh, like a little resistor affair thing, all right? What you do is you point it at the component you want to change, or that you want Tina to step through. So I'm just gonna use R1 here, select that. Now up comes this little dialog box describing R1. All of these things in here, we can have Tina modify for us. In our case, I'm just gonna look at the resistance. So you can either hit the little ellipsis here or you can hit select, right? So you select the thing you want. In this case, I want resistance. So you either hit the select button or the ellipsis. And now it comes up and says, all right, here you, you, know, here you have some um, options. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to end? You know, how do you want to deal with this? Well, by default, this thing just comes up and says, well, we're going to start this at uh, 800 ohms. You're going to go to 1.2K, in other words, a 20% tolerance. And there's going to be three of them. The sweep type can either be linear or logarithmic or custom. That's what list is. So if you did linear in this case, it's just going to divide this, dif uh, this delta, this difference, by the number of cases, right? Divide it up. So you're going to have an 800, a 1,000, and a 1.2K, all right? So this is something I would like to do. You know, if I had, a, in this case, a 20% tolerance, let's say, I'd say, all right, I want to see my nominal value, 1K, um, and then I want to see 20% down, 800, 20% uh, up, 1.2K. You know, if I had 10%, I would come in here and say, all right, there's, uh, you know, I'll do 900 and 1.1K, you know, whatever works for you. Maybe I want uh, a wider range. Maybe I'm just, like I said, doing a what if. I want to 
check out some options and maybe I want to do 10 cases all right so instead of three cases I'll do 10 cases now if you choose logarithmic and I'll show you this in a sec um, logarithmic basically gives you constant ratios rather than constant values so like in this case 3 900 1000 1100 those are the three values we're jumping 100 each but if you want to do big jumps sometimes it's better to do factors like I want to do doubles or factors of 10 so you can use a logarithmic setup for that the other thing you can do is a list right this is a custom basically when you select this you type in the exact values you want a little dialog box comes up and you can just put in new values right so I'll just show you I'm not going to use it this time but here's the parameters that are set up here 800 uh, 1k 1.2k now I can do an add new and get like I said four five six seven parameters that I want to specifically step through right and you can edit it you know remove the last okay so I'm just going to cancel that because I'm going to leave my um, my linear running from 900 to 1.1k and we're going to see what happens all right now any analysis you want to do that produces a graphical output that's game so in my case I am just going to continue with that AC analysis so you know we could also do like a transient analysis for example but I'm just going to do a, another Bode plot same things same setups but you'll notice we have three curves now all right and I'll put my legend on here and you can see what's happening so this maroon one sort of the inside one is run for 900 ohms the sort of middle greenish one is the 1k and then this sort of grayish kind of thing on the outside is for the 1.1k and this is ex working exactly as we would expect right a bigger resistor with our uh, little lead network would produce um, you know a slightly lower break frequency and we can also look at the phase and we see the same thing all right so our 45 critical frequency we can see the little shift in that okay so that's that's pretty cool all right now that by no means is the end of this as I said you could change other parameters in here not just the resistance as a matter of fact you can have multiple parameters so I'm going to select this again and come over and select my cap same thing happens right I get the dialog for this any of these things we can come in and alter um, in this case I am going to monkey with the capacitance but this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at big jumps in capacitance I'm going to use a logarithmic jump so I'm going to do three decades or actually three values across two decades I'm going to leave the one mic as the top value but then I also want to see a tenth of this value which would be 100 nano and a tenth of that which would be 10 nano all right I'm going to leave three cases right but like I said you could you know you could start this at one nano and then have four cases and it would go again factors of 10 decade 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 all right now what this is going to do is give us a combination sort of a all permutations run through so you know I came up here before and I looked at the mode so by default we're going to get combinational stepping but we can do what's called parallel stepping so parallel stepping we basically say um, for R1 use value A for uh, C1 use value B and then for R1 and the next run use uh, you know value D and then use value E for this you know X value and Y value so you basically pair these things up or maybe you have five components and so you can just make a list that would have the values for every single thing all right instead of all possible permutations which if you're going to monkey with a bunch of components that can get really busy all right so I'm just going to leave this with combinational just to show you you're going to get all permutations out of this and again I am going to go in and do the AC analysis Bode plot all right so notice we have three sets three sets of three so here right for each one of these there's the three that we expected you know if I go back to let's see where is it right here when I did it all by itself right just our one all by itself we got these three curves all right but now 
Um, that's essentially this set. And then I've got um, the other sets for the other capacitors. So again, I'll put the legend on here. You can see this really nice. So right here, this set of three, that's the first three on top, 900 ohms, 10 nanofarads, 1K ohm, 10 nanofarads, 1.1K, 10 nanofarads. And then this section with the blue and the maroon, all right, that's the, that's the uh, 900 ohms with 100 nanofarads, the 1K with 100 nanofarads, 1.1K with 100 nanofarads. And then finally up on top with this sort of fluorescent green and the gray, the bottom three, there's the 900, the 1K, and the 1.1K, but this time it's with one mic each. All right, so you can see how that multiplies out. You want to play these little what-if games, right? I want to try something and just see what ends up happening. This is a very nice way of doing it, right? Because, I mean, you can do it manually, right? You can just sit here and change a value, run a sim. Change a value, run a sim. Change a value, run a sim, all right? Oh, and by the way, same thing for the phase, right? We can see all those phases. Whatever you asked for as far as an analysis, that's what you're going to get, right? These multiple sets of them, all right? Pretty cool. All right, so resistor, capacitor, you can imagine inductor is going to be the exact same thing. What about um, active components, semiconductors? Well, here's a little op amp circuit. All right, I've got a 70, 741 op amp. This thing is just set up for a gain of two. Um, I happen to put in a square wave over here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at a transient output, right? A time domain output rather than a frequency domain output. Like I said, if you get a graphic output, any one of those graphic outputs is game for this parameter stepping. So in this particular case, uh, with the 741, we expect to see some slewing. In other words, the square wave that we're putting in is going to turn into kind of a trapezoidal sort of shape. Um, the leading and trailing edges of that square wave are going to have noticeable tilt to them, a noticeable diagonal effect. All right. So just to do um, you know a straight up uh, analysis, I'll, I'll just check, right? So single, we're going to do single mode here, all right? Um, do a transient. I'm going to run from two, 0 to 2 milliseconds. That looks good. All right, so let's put the legend on here. So the green is the generator, 10-volt square wave, like I said. The output is this maroon, and we can see this edge, right? Because the op amp is not all that fast. The 741 is fairly slow. Um, depending on the grade that you get and the luck of the draw, because, you know, there's tolerance on these things just like there is with resistors and capacitors. You know, you're probably going to get somewhere around half a volt per microsecond, 500,000 volts per second if you prefer. All right, that's what we're looking at for that thing. Okay. Now, I turn around and say, okay, I want to go into this, you know, parameter stepping version. So I use my little button over here. Now just select the op amp. And again, this comes up and says, okay, here's your 741. So either hit the ellipsis or the select button. Now, any of the parameters internal to the op amp can be adjusted. So in our case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start monkeying with the slew rate. Now, the slew rate here is given in volts per second. Just remember that we normally think in volts per microsecond. So this is going to look like it's a million times too big. But in this case... Here's my 500K, 500,000 volts per second, which is half a volt per microsecond. So that's the one I want to play around with, all right? All right, so here's the little thing that we saw before, right? The little setup. So what I'm going to do is, oh, I think I'll just go from, um, let's say, let's do a logarithmic again. I'll do three steps. And I know it's nominally... 500, so I'm going to go 250, in other words, a factor of 2 on the, on the downside, and then we'll just do 1 meg on the upside, right? So that's going to be 250, 500, and then 1 meg, right? So the, the middle case is going to be the sort of typical expected case, all right? So again, logarithmic, so it's factors of 2 in this case, right, to get those three sets. It's, you know, factor of 2, factor of 2. Okay, great. Now, let's go in and do a, a transient analysis like we did before. Let's see what we got. All right. Um, where is my, there it is. Okay, so you can see this blue, this dark blue is the generator. That's our 10-volt uh, peak square wave. And now we can see in the three colors, this maroon, green, and sort of olive, 
are the three different slew rates that are set up, right? 250 is the maroon, that's a quarter volt per microsecond, right? So pretty pokey there. And then the nominal 500K that you kind of expect, right? A bit faster, and then this sort of olive colored is the uh, one volt per microsecond, one million volts per second, coming up a bit steeper. So I can see this directly, right? There you go. It's nice, one sort of diagram, everything I need to know right there. Now I can go back in and, and change other parameters as well, just like I did before with you know, a resistor and a capacitor, I can go in and monkey with bunches of these things. And I can do this across multiple components. So if I said, you know, well, I want to change the, the um, uh, slew rate on this, but I also want to change, you know, these resistor values. All right, you can do that, right? Any, any of those individual parameters that you can set, you can monkey with, right? You know, I could have five, 15 components out here and monkey with several of them and change different things in different ones. Right? I don't have to just say, well, it's only going to be the you know, resistance for this thing. Oh, they're all going to be resistor values. Right? All of these op amps, they're all going to be you know, slew rates. No, you can go in and, and change different things. Okay? All right. So you know, I can come in here. You know, whatever I have that's available, I can monkey with. All right? So you hit this guy, select it, you know, and off you go. Now, why did I do that? Because I want to show you how to remove it. Like you don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so when this comes up, there's a remove button. So you just select it again, hit remove, and notice that little asterisk disappeared. Okay. Whenever you have a control element, that little asterisk pops up right there. So if it's not under control, parameter stepping, then mm, you don't get one. All right. Great. Well, Really useful little thing to play around with. Um, I suggest that you give it a whirl, see what you can come up with. And until next time, this is Professor Fiari saying, have a good one.